Today, um, Business Day, our conversation will be on how the federal government can protect local industries. Just recently at an event, the richest man in Africa, Liko Dangote, came out to talk about how, you know, the high interest rate and the increase, increased interest rate uh, across the nation is indeed impacting, you know, local businesses negatively. And he talked to how the federal government should put, um, put up mechanisms to ensure that businesses are able to, you know, stay afloat uh, despite the quite unfavorable business environment. And we did, you know, ask questions on social media asking Nigerians uh, what your thoughts were on this um, session by the richest man in Africa, speaking of uh, Liko Dangote. And we did get quite a number of responses, but we, this is the question that we put on social media, asking Nigerians to share their thoughts. Uh, Liko Dangote has emphasized the importance of safeguarding local industries. How do you think the Nigerian government can best protect and promote local industries hashtag support local hashtag nigeria economy and let's take a look at some of the responses that we did receive by social media users here abdullahi is saying our government should go and study what happened in china in the past 30 years what happened in china is it the industrial revolution well away from this comment uh, right now ibrahim waziri is saying by subsidizing raw materials and improving electricity supply uh, to reduce and reducing uh, tax rate thank you for sending in your comment again okay this is a repetition of the comment we saw earlier talking about you know studying what happened in china uh, mahmoud rabiu is saying by providing trade policies that will favor the local producers, giving them access to capital and conducting research that will lead to technological advancement of the local industries. Thank you, Mahmoud, for sending in your comment. Keep the conversation going, sending your comment on, on, on the discourse for today. And Free from the River is saying, the Nigerian government can boost local industries by implementing import substitution policies and enhancing infrastructure, improving access to finance and investing in skill development and streamlining regulate, regulations. Hashtag support local, hashtag Nigerian economy. Well said there. Away from that now, Alechenu is saying tax holiday or waiver, reduce cost of energy, and reduce import duties on imported raw materials by 50% and empower Nigerians to be off-takers of locally produced goods. Provide security and road infrastructures to move finished goods and raw materials from one place to the other. Well said, Alechenu. Away from that comment now, Mohammed is saying uh, to protect and promote local industries, the Nigerian government should implement supportive policies and tariffs and improve infrastructure as well as provide affordable financing, invest in skills development and combat corruption and streamline bureaucracy. Thank you uh, to all who responded to the poll right there on social media. Very interesting responses, I must say, that we did get. But I'm joined now by a professional who is an entrepreneur and an industrialist to discuss, you know, uh, the allegations by Aliko Dangote and the feedback that we have gotten from most Nigerians on how the federal government can improve and protect local industries. I'm joined now by Dr. Antonia Juno, who is um, a businessman and an industrialist. Thank you for joining us on Business Daily this morning. Good morning. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us on the program. You have heard, you know, the responses from most Nigerians. But let me hear from you now. How significant would you say the Aliko Dangote speech on the need for policies to protect and cultivate domestic industries in Nigeria is, especially at this time? I think um, the, the, the speech by uh, Alaji Dangote is a... Uh, is, uh, very apt and is uh, very appropriate 
uh, at this point in time in our, our political and economic life, uh, Aladi is saying the right things, you know, uh, that government needs to look into if this government is serious about protecting industries. Um, um, I don't know if you want me to, to give my own opinion uh, to buttress what Aladi has said, or if you just want me to comment on uh, what Aladi has said. Yeah, please go on with your opinions, especially on the current state of the, you know, industrial sector, manufacturing sector here in Nigeria. Okay, uh, I'll say that uh, uh, since the beginning of this uh, government, uh, I'll tell you that uh, uh, the, the, the local industries uh, are not having a very good time. Uh, it's maybe essentially not 100% the fault of the government, uh, but the government has a lot to do in putting things back on the right track. Um, there are factors that are making things difficult for we manufacturers in Nigeria to and unfortunately, um, whatever costs or increase in the cost of production we have, we have no choice other than to transfer a large part of it to the final consumers. Mm. And that is why you are seeing the massive inflation in our, uh, uh, our economy today, because um, somebody has to pay, you know, even, even though we, the manufacturers, taking a part of the cost, but the people also have to pay a significant part of the cost, you know, and that is why we are saying that the price of goods are going very high these days, as you know. And I'll tell you uh, a few factors that has uh, accounted for the high inflation and the high cost of doing business, and that's made it so, so difficult for me, the manufacturers, uh, that's, that's created a very difficult environment for me, manufacturers, uh, in the current regime. You know, uh, I think that one of it was not caused by this government, uh, but they have every obligation to fix it. And that is the foreign exchange crisis that we are going through today. You know, uh, the government has to find a way of bringing the Naira down, you know, from the current 1,500 to so maybe something in the region, you know, something much more uh, manageable. You know, at the current pace, it means that, let me give you an illustration. Things that you buy for 500 Naira last year, in March, April, today, you get them for around 2,500 Naira. The reason for this is that last year, dollar was around 450 Naira uh, to an era, was around 450 to an era. Today, dollar is about 1,500 Naira at the official at the official exchange window. So you can see that almost the price of everything has to go three times. You know, so the, the, the fundamental problem why we have this inflation is the foreign exchange crisis, and the government has to find a way to fix this foreign exchange crisis. I don't know. I mean, the government has to find a way. We are in government and we are giving them a mandate. Therefore, they have every obligation to find a way of making it work so that the, the, the economy can begin to have a, a you know, some sort of a, a new lease of life, you know. Another factor, which I think is very, very important. Are you still with me? Uh, let me know that you're still with me. Yeah, please go on with your thoughts. I can hear you loud and clear. Beautiful. Another factor which is affecting local industries and by extension the economy is the aggressive drive for taxation by these current governments. Every government, parastata and agency have an idea or have a, a mindset that the only job they are after or the only job or only, or the only obligation they have now is to aggressively go after manufacturers, business people who get taxed. When well, every businessman, every manufacturer, every law-abiding citizen is, has an obligation to pay tax, you know, which is fantastic. No economy can grow without tax-paying citizens. But we have to know that the way the current government is going about it, there has to be a change of attitude because otherwise they are going to kill the goose that, that is laying the golden egg. Let me give you an instance. If you, every manufacturer has to import raw material into the country, there is no manufacturer that you speak to today that is not complaining about the, uh, the, the, the unscrupulous and the overzealous attitude of the, of the custom authorities at the port. The, 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 the containers of raw material that you probably play for in the range of 20 million, 15 million, 20 million, this time last year, Today, you are clearly there for 60, 70 million naira. The same HS code, 
the same boots, everything they say, but, but for some reason, the custom authorities have found a way to make library important by being overzealous in revenue generation. And when the government looks into this, and, I, and I'll tell you this, everybody is thinking that the reason why the price of goods are high is because of forex uh, devaluation alone. No, I think forex devaluation is accounted for 10 or 50 60 percent of why the cost of this and why we have massive inflation i think that the reason why we have massive inflation in nigeria today 40 percent of it is accounted for by the activities of the nigerian custom authority the way they have made it extremely difficult to get to clear your containers out and the way they are overzealously and unscrupulously in increase the cost of clearing raw materials by over 200 to 300 percent in some instances. Same goods you cleared last month, the government authorities have done, and you find out that what you have had to pay 15, 20 million for, you are paying 40, 50 million. What you have to pay 50, 50 million for, you are asked to pay 200 million for. Now, the conversation is who bears the brunt of this? The masses on the street. That is why you see a 900 grams of milk being sold for 2,800. March 2023 is being sold for 9,000 naira today. Hmm. And this is what this government needs to look at. If the government really, really, really wants to make life easy for the people, if the government wants to fight stand, uh, inflation, they need to first look, you know, at the activities of the government agencies, starting from Nigeria Custom Authority. Yes. And you can see the values that they are declaring. They, they are claiming that they are surpassing their targets. However, imports of raw material and goods into Nigeria is dropping massively by, in some account, more than 30%. Yet, you are surpassing your targets. How are you able to achieve that? Because the few manufacturers and importers that are left, you are unscrupulously and overseriously tasking them. Hmm. Making it difficult for them to survive. Okay, doctor. So the government to... has to find a way of doing something about this. Thank well you. Well said, well said, uh, Doctor. I'd ask for you to hold your thoughts for now. Uh, let us go on a short break. When we return, the conversation will continue. And Dr. Anthony Ajulo, who is an industrialist, is still on standby. And we shall be, you know, conversing on how the government can protect local industries to stay. And you are still watching Business Daily coming to you live on Trust TV. Just before the break, we started a conversation on how the federal government can protect local industries. And this is coming from a recent speech by Africa's richest man, Ali Kodangote, over recent policies that we have seen from government and how these policies have not been so favorable to uh, in the area of running business here in Nigeria. But I still have my guest with me. He is an industrialist an entrepreneur and a manufacturer, Dr. Anthony Adjulo. Thank you once again for coming on the program this morning. Good morning, Chairman Maka. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you once again. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like for us to, you know, do a comparative analysis. You are someone who is well-traveled. As I speak, you are in Ivory Coast at the moment. And I would like for us to compare, you know, the business environment here in Nigeria with what is obtainable in some other parts of the world. Can you give us some sort of examples? Now, you've spoken to quite a number of challenges that, you know, as an importer, as a business person, you are facing. But I would like for us to talk about, you know, policies that we could emulate in the area of protecting uh, local businesses, what policies would you would you would you would you would you uh, want for Nigeria to emulate uh, that are already operating or operational in other countries uh, across the world? Thank you very much, Chair Maka. I think that and I hope that uh, the government officials uh, and the presidency would um, uh, have a listening ear. Um, I, and I also want to believe that they know what to do. Maybe they are just not ready to do it yet, you know. But if we are really going to move this country forward, there has to be some strategic changes in policy, you know. Um, a lot of African countries have certain advantage over us. They have certain strategic advantage over uh, manufacturers, business people in Nigeria. For a few factors, you know. One of it, for instance, is the cost of borrowing, you know, uh, in Ivory Coast here, yeah, the cost of borrowing is in the region of uh, nine to twelve percent. 
Uh, as I speak to you today, if you're going to take any loan from any bank in Nigeria, the cost of 35 percent. How does a business survive if you have to borrow at 28 to 35 percent? You know, it makes it extremely difficult to get to do business. And these are the policies that the government needs to look at. You know, if the government is going to change this, again, it's tied to a lot of factors because if you're going to work on your interest rates, you first have to work on the inflation, you know. So, and the inflation is influenced by a lot of action and inaction of the government. So the government has to have a think of the whole economy. They have to look at what are the factors that are uh, that are incentivizing inflation and they have to find a way of fixing these factors. I've explained one of them to you now. One of them is a unscrupulous and overzealous attitude of the custom agent at the port. The other one is the foreign exchange crisis that we are facing, you know, and um, once government is able to do something about this too, and I put in place a few other factors or policies that encourage these uh, SMEs to grow, I want to believe that the economy will begin to uh, take the right direction. You know, another factor uh, that I think that the government can borrow from most of the African countries is creating a, an effective credit system. For instance, um, uh, folks that I've seen, I would say, you know, if you if you have a good job. Uh, and you've worked in most companies for two to three years. You can just walk into a, a, an automobile company and you pick a brand new car. Mm. In the next 24 hours, you have the car delivered in your house because they have an effective credit system. And if you look at the road here, 70 to 80 percent of the citizens are driving brand new cars because the government has created an effective policy in place that encourages. Uh, 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 People to be able to afford, you know, the brand new car through a credit system. You know, in fact, I think that what they also did was that they banned any vehicle that is over four years into their country. Any vehicle that is over four years, you can't bring it into Ivory Coast. So you, you can see a number of policies that the government is making to make life easy for that people. And you can see sanity in the environment. You know, I know that usually this is not the fault of the government alone. Uh, the citizens have its own part to play because uh, the bigger problem with Nigerian citizens is that we always find a lot of circumventing any law. You know, our, our, you know, the degree of success of a nation is also a function of how law abiding the citizens are. Nigeria's law abiding uh, quotient, you know, is very low. The citizens of Nigeria that are law abiding are less than forty percent, which is also a big problem to affect to effectively implement good policies in Nigeria, you know, we have the citizens that are as bad as corrupt as the government itself, you know, and I think that except we, the citizens and the government, begin to do things right, uh, our country will find it very hard to be on the right path. So these are few things that I think the government needs to do: create an effective credit policy system where citizens, where businesses have easy access to funding, you know, how find a way of reducing the cost of growing. You know, when a businessman is able to have access, I mean, imagine a businessman in Ivory Coast that has 12% interest rate and a businessman in Nigeria, and we are manufacturing the same produce. And can I also tell you this? It's a lot easier to get to export goods from Ivory Coast than it is in Nigeria. I was at San Pedro uh, a few days ago. Uh, the San Pedro is the, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, port cities in Ivory Coast. And the number of containers that are getting exported daily, seamlessly. We don't have custom officials asking for bribes. We don't have uh, government agencies putting obstacles in your way. The containers of cocoa, uh, agricultural produce, hundreds and thousands of these containers are getting exported every day. You know, the government has to find a way of making policies work. My company manufactures produce and products, and those of our products. We try to export them to other African countries. But I don't tell you that it's a lot of trouble, a lot of hell to get to export out of Africa, out of Nigeria. And that is why we are looking for alternative countries so we can have our, our, our factory set up. And it's easier to export to other countries in Africa since it is extremely difficult to export out of our own country. So these are the policies that the government needs to look. Prayer doesn't fix a nation. If prayer fixes a nation, Nigeria will be the best country in the world. It's a place of prayer, but there's also a place of work. And I think that as much as we pray a lot in this country, the place of work, we are not doing what we need to do right. The government, the people, and I think that that's what we need to start doing. We need to take a new turn, begin to do things right, put in place the right policy, 
you know. And let the poly, let the citizens also be law abiding when these policies come in place, you know. So I, I think this is my take, uh, Chair Maka. You you have hammered on the um, do I say the revenue generation um, style of the Nigeria Customs Service over and over again. But I will, you know, want to ask now. We understand that the activities of the customs have been largely automated over time. Are you saying that there has that has not in any way yielded any positive results? Because, uh, like I stated, these activities have been automated. So where does where has the delays come from? Uh, especially for you now, when you import or ex where you're trying to import or export. Your, your goods from, from the country? Um, okay, yes. The, you, you mentioned that some activities of um, the custom authorities have been um, automated. Uh, the problem is not with automation or uh, it's not with the automation. Um, I'd like to speak first to even the automation uh, you have spoken about. Uh, Nigeria port is about one of the most disorganized ports uh, within the West African region. Uh, it takes longer time to clear your goods out of the Nigerian ports. Um, the, the shipping companies, the uh, terminal authorities, they all take advantage of you because there are no laws, there are no oversight agencies. And even the oversight agencies are not doing their work. Everybody is just looking out to make money, you know. So that already puts a lot of burden on the customers. You know, sometimes you will find out that containers that you are supposed to get out in a week, you, you, you have to wait for one, two, three weeks because of one agency delay, one government agency, terminal, and all that. You know? So these are problems that the government needs to look at. In the time of Jonathan, you know, when a lot of people were complaining about the activities of custom and the port and how it was affecting businesses, the government then set up a body to look into the activities at the port. And they came up with far-reaching conclusions and the recommendations. And these were implemented. And this massively improved the activities of our port system, you know. But I think that we have gone back on most of these uh, ideas. And I think the government needs to create such a body back, such a body to go into the uh, the whole... Uh, because what you also need to understand is that one of the best revenue generating agencies for government both now in the future is the port authority, is the custom. But we do not do that at the expense of businesses. We do not, um, you know, strangulate businesses because we want to generate revenue. You know, so that is to speak to, uh, uh, to the issue of automation. Now, let me speak to the issue of unscrupulous and overzealous and arbitrary levying of custom duties, you know. Uh, as I said to you, a container of raw material that you bring in last year, that uh, even that you were charged perhaps 10 million, 15 million, today you get to pay 60 million, 70 million. Why? It's not just only because they have changed their, their, their exchange rates, you know, the customer are using the official exchange, which is in, in itself is unfair, which in itself is a way for government to reduce inflation. If the official exchange rate out there is 1,500, I don't think customs should be using anything more than 800, 900. Because if they do that, the cost, so the cost of goods reduced, the masses will be lost. Some of the benefit of the reduced cost of production to the, the masses, you know, to the end users of the product. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the custom authorities, for some reasons, because they are under pressure to generate revenue, are un unreasonably and habitually tasking importers. A container that you are supposed to pay 15, 20 million for, you are asked to pay 60 million for no reason, for no, for no uh, measurable index. With no measurable index, you are forced to pay this amount. And the problem with when you have goods and imports is that you are running against them. If you don't pay, you have demorage running on your neck. So you have no choice. You have to negotiate and pay. And then you have no choice. You have to transfer the cost to the end users. So the big problem is not the problem of automation. It's the problem. There's an, an, an enablement from the government authorities, from the higher authority to the custom authority to go after the 
importers of raw material, goods, manufacturer, to generate more revenue for government because the government wants to make more revenue. And these guys are doing it arbitrarily in an overzealous way. And they mm. are killing businesses. Mm. You declare the actual value of your goods. They will, if, for instance, you bring in a container and the value of the container is $100,000, custom authority will tell you that the value of your container is $100,000, it's $250,000, and they will charge you on that. So the problem is, already we have increased the value of your goods, and therefore you also have to transfer that cost to somebody, who the end user. And so you are wondering that this goods that I just bought, this uh, 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 Maggie that I just bought 10 Naira yesterday, is 40 Naira today, 50 Naira. Or this bottle of, uh, of uh, milk or whatever it is that I just bought uh, three days ago for 10,000, it's now 45,000. The reason is not just because of foreign exchange crisis. It's because of the overzealous and unscrupulous uh, charges by the Nigerian Customs Authority. And if the government doesn't look into this, I want to tell you that this is going to kill a lot of businesses. You know, and I don't know why Alaji also did, because maybe Alaji enjoys, Alaji Dabuti enjoys some sort of uh, special arrangement with the government. So, like, that small businesses like ours will not enjoy. Because I was thinking that he would also speak to this, you know, because a lot of small businesses, a lot of medium and small large scale manufacturers who don't have the political clouds to negotiate and all that are going through a lot of trouble getting their rules out and are getting to pay higher rates. And the government needs to do something about this, mm. you know. Otherwise, more businesses will die, and more businesses are uh, are going to go out of business. You know, mm. more businesses will die, more businesses are going to go out of business. Mm. Uh, well said, uh, Doctor Ajulo. From all you've said, you've painted, you know, a very grim picture, I should say, on you know how micro, small, and medium enterprises are struggling to stay afloat especially here in nigeria but quickly now just before we go i will like for you to put out you know your parting words especially you know on how local industries sh should be protected maybe some sort of pre protection protectionism measures that you are recommending in one minute i i, I don't think we, what we need now is even the protectionism you know, I mean, the protest protectionism measures are good. But what we're asking for is the government to take, take their leg, take their foot off our neck. That's the only thing we're asking for. Allow manufacturers to breed. Allow us to be able to do business. Allow us to be able to import our raw materials at good rates compared to competitors in West African countries. Allow us to be able to pay reasonable rates for clearing our goods, custom duties. Once the government allows this and government is able to work on the on the on the foreign exchange rate. I think businesses businesses in Nigeria usually don't ask for much from government. You know, we provide our own electricity, we provide our own water, we provide practically everything. But just asking the government to make policies that makes it easy for us to do business, you know, and to stop this idea of double taxation. You have local government taxing you, state government taxing you, different agencies taxing you, Nezra, Nimasa. You have practically almost all the agencies coming to ask you for one tax or the other. Government also need to synchronize all these tax system together into one board so that it's seamless and easy for, for, for manufacturers and local industries to, to, to be able to survive. So I think this is my take away. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the insights that you have shared this morning on Business Daily. Thank so you, Chawaka. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Business Daily. Very insightful conversation there with Dr. Antonia Julo, who is an entrepreneur and industrialist, speaking to issues around multiple taxation, FX crisis, and a lot more, you know, issues that are stifling the growth of, you know, local businesses and how these local businesses can be protected. But join the conversation on social media and let us hear from you. Share with us your thoughts and observations as a business person here in Nigeria. My name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.